Well, hello everyone out there and welcome back to Birth 2012 News. This is Stephen Dynan, your host for this series. And I don't know if you can feel it out there yet, but at the hub here, we are feeling incredible electricity that's igniting around the world as more and more people activate around this movement. And it strikes us that it's actually perfect timing in some ways after the, after the grief and the, and the heartbreak of Connecticut to move into a mode where we take action on creating more love in the world and to really ignite a new way of being. And that's always the opportunity and tragedy to turn it into positive transformation. So in that spirit, we're gonna to start today as we always do with three minutes of love. We do this as practice for tomorrow we begin three days of love. And we want people to take this pledge, spread it to friends and allies, www.3daysoflove.com, so that we are amplifying the love in the world and, and really experience a new way of being with each other. And we're gonna have our motivational maestro, Freddie Ravel, who's here with us, lead us in this uh, three minutes of love. Thank you, domo arigato, danke schön, merci beaucoup, molto grazie, muito obrigado, che che, terima case, and muchas gracias. I say thank you to all of you out there in the spirit of gratitude in all these languages because for these three minutes of love, I want to use the world's undisputed international language of music. And I'd like to express to you three elements of music that will help us and anchor us into the sense and space of love. Let's begin with the melody. Melody. The melody is the identity of any piece of music, and the melody is the identity of who we are. Think about what your melody is. What is it when you stand in the mirror and say, I am? Who are you? What is your identity? By anchoring yourself in loving thyself, you take the first step into bringing your life into the great symphony that you are. So let's take a moment and take a deep breath and anchor into the center of who you are. What is your purpose today? How do you move through the love of what you will be as we give birth to 2012? Once you have your melody and clear, and you're clear on who you are, what you stand for, what your passion, what your purpose is, you are now ready to interact with another melody. In music, when one melody meets another melody, you have the beginning and the essence of harmony. So, Imagine the people that you love and the people that you are at effort to make peace with and let the effort melt away and consider what is it to be in that state of compassion, that state of empathy that allows you to listen so that when your melody meets the face of another melody, you can come together in a state that is really all about saying namaste. The light in me recognizes and honors the light in you. The melody in me recognizes and honors the light in you. Once that harmony is aligned, you can now get into the rhythm. Get into the rhythm of the melodies and harmonies that are surrounding your life. And as you do this, the love that you surround yourself becomes an orchestration that allows you to hold the conductor's baton of your life and celebrate the great symphony that you are. This is the way to bring music into the love of who you are, what you stand for, and the entire global community. I'm Freddie Ravel, and I say, may you always sing your melody, listen for harmony, dance to your rhythm, and celebrate the great score called you. Well, Freddie, that was totally a beautiful way to begin. And um, there's a lot of people who are great musicians, but not as many people who are great at teaching us how to live musically, to use the deeper structure of music and embody that in the way that we move and engage and the way you led that meditation. It, it, it opens the portal for new understandings of, of how music is a template for us. And mm. so you've got a, this incredible background in so many different areas as a Grammy award-winning um, musical artist, as a motivational speaker, motivational maestro, and, and just teacher of these things. So I'd love, to, I'd love to just share a little bit from your sizzle reel so people get a little ah. flavor <laughs> so we, we can get that and then we can go deeper with you. But let's get a little bit of uh, Freddie out in the world.
<laughs> smoking, smoking hot. Well, I love, I love the bringing of that kind of like salsa Latino flavor. And I know you can also go soulful and deep and sweet. And you're going to have some of your uh, majesty, majesty on display on Saturday and also on the vision stage. We're going to get a full hour with you. So thanks so much for bringing your gifts into the gala event here in Los Angeles and into the Birth 2012 movement. It is my great pleasure, Stephen. It's an honor to be with you and, and to be part of this magnificent vision for Birth 2012. Well, let's talk about music. Absolutely. Because a lot of this, you know, we've been laying the structure, we got a lot of inspiration happening around the world, but music has a lot to do with bringing us into that space of unity with each other, and that's what we're looking to create on the planetary scale. So maybe to speak a little bit about how you see uh, music being a tool for opening to this higher octave of ourselves. Thank you, Steve. I think that the, the greatest tool that we have that music can teach us as the world's you know, undisputed language is the art of listening. Mm. I'm going to cut to the chase. <laughs> we, uh, we're in a time of a lot of urgency and a time of the greatest moment. Uh, we're at that moment of a lot of crisis in the world, but of course that means we're really in a state of opportunity. Mm -hmm. And I like to spell opportunity O-P-P-O-R-T-U-N-E. Oh, nice. I-T-Y opportunity how do we find those the tune the melody that ignites us so that we're present for each other so I believe that music gives us that opportunity to listen because music is structured with balance in it for example if I say Steve you know if I say dun 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 my hunch dun 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 bravo yeah and this is what music does. It gives us that dialogue. In other words, the moment something gets put out, we instinctively want to answer it. And music is the, is the great portal to conversation mm. because we seek balance with it. You know, it's interesting. One of the events that we've been so delighted that it's activated for the birth movement is called Harmony in the Holy Land. Speaking mm. to what you're talking about, going to have uh, the three Abrahamic faiths coming together prayers and blessings, but also making music together from the different traditions as a way to heal the schism, because we can find that higher common ground through, through, through music and through harmony. It's, uh, I believe it's the giant, giant killer app that has not been, <laughs> that has not been unleashed, uh -huh. and I'm thrilled uh, that we can get it out there as something that we all have imbued in us. It's, it's in our DNA, mm -hmm. and we park it in the world of entertainment, mm -hmm. but it's really a tool that I believe is on the level of food, water, shelter, music. Mm. So share a little more with uh, the folks out there about how do we take the principles of music and shift and apply them in our life to live more full spectrum and in, in, in really aligned with our purpose. One of the tools, there's many of them, but one of the most important tools is how we end up using the power of melody, harmony, and rhythm. See, melody is the individual. As we opened up this morning, you know, with the prayer and the I am, Melody is about being who you are, what you stand for. Harmony is about how you connect with others. You know, if you're just out there on an island singing your own melody, man, you know, this is my dream, this is what I want to do, but you're just out there on that island doing that, guess what? Not much is going to happen. It's not until we learn how to harmonize with others that our, our ideas get activated. But okay, let's say you and an, and an individual you've just met have created this beautiful harmony. If you don't put rhythm underneath it, if you don't agree that now you've got to set that in motion by agreeing, okay, let's get this done by next Monday at 10 a.m. We're going to review what our melody and harmonies have done. Next Monday at 10 o'clock is the tempo and timing that we have to set to get it to happen. So rhythm is really action, action mm. across time. This is what rhythm really is. Mm. Without the drummer in our life, without having any awareness of time, Melody and harmony has no boundaries. And actually, boundaries set you free. There's hmm. sort of a paradox about that. Uh, but Igor Stravinsky, the great Russian composer, the rite of spring, one of his greatest quotes is, give me boundaries so I can truly be free. Hmm. And that is something that I believe is imperative to all human beings. We have to be given a box, a framework, so that we can take our melodies and harmonies and deliver something that is of contribution and of value to the world. I love that. It's, it's almost like the different band members become uh, sub-personalities. And so, and oftentimes we think of like we're kind of at war with different parts of ourselves. The parts of us that doesn't want any structures and wants to just be free to do whatever. 
if, if we just indulge that, we're not necessarily going to be very creative or effective. And so you want to get that into balance with the part that's like, okay, we need to stay on point, we need to stay on structure, the more discipline has a little more taskmaster kind of quality. But then it's like when those two are in, in balance with each other, then something beautiful gets created. Perfect, Stephen. And, and the something beautiful is what we, in, in the tune-up to success methodology that we, uh, I've been doing this now for a decade. We've been presenting it all across the world. But that when, that that phrase, something beautiful happens, we call that the score. Hmm. The score. And the score is that hard copy mission statement that a musician or conductor holds in their hands that says, here's the melody, here's the harmony, here's the tempo, the rhythm, and now the manifestation of the beautiful idea is here. It's the score. And the score is something we are all striving for. Mm -hmm. And when I say the score, I say it musically, but I also say it as any outcome or result that we are pursuing in life. Mm -hmm. So I would, I would recommend and I would celebrate with all of you the idea for 2013 is, you know, New Year's resolutions, when you write those things down, think of those as your scores. They're not just resolutions. Uh, and, and the typical ones have to do with things like health, better dieting, more education, more growth, more love, right? Mm -hmm. these, are, these are standard things that we all achieve or aim to achieve, call those the score. Because mm -hmm. when you call those the score, you realize that they're not just little things, they're holistic, mm -hmm. you know? Bettering the way you eat and exercise is a holistic concept. It's about being as complete as you possibly can, physically. Bettering your education and growing is about helping your, your emotional state and your knowledge so that you're more effective, let's say, in the world as an entrepreneur or simply as another human being, being a parent, being an employee, being a boss. Mm -hmm. All the different hats that we wear are about raising the score of who we are. Mm. And that has to do with the art of listening. Mm. And music is one of those few things we listen to willingly. A lot of things we don't listen to. We don't want to listen. Uh, people don't like to listen that much, you know? We, mm -hmm. sp we speak at about 150 words a minute, but our minds go at 600 to 1,000 words a minute. So you say something to somebody and their minds have raced way ahead of you onto something entirely different. So this is why music allows us an amazing tool, an opportunity to be present. Hmm. Well, as you're speaking and talking about the score, I think one, one thing that struck me is that what we're really doing with Birth 2012 is trying to up-level the score of the planet. Mm. And with more harmony, we've, we've had a lot of dissonance on this planet. It's like we have a lot of conflict and polarization. It's like Democrats versus Republicans, mm -hmm. you know, Christians versus Muslims. And there's a lot of intensity, men versus women. There's been a lot of intense polarization, which is essentially bad music. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. And so we've had this kind of dissonant, like oftentimes if you pay attention to the news, it can be really grating. It doesn't have that beauty and harmony and, and majesty about it. And so what we want to really do with Birth 2012 is create an experience for a couple days that offers a new template. When people, when they get a taste of beauty and possibility, then we can start to say, oh, how do we do this longer term? And it really is, it's more about a symphony of, of players working together rather than all these different competing voices trying to like silence each other. And that's ultimately what a great, a great uh, band is doing is that they have to listen to each other and, and, and blend into the like higher vibe with each other as well. Well said, uh, beautifully said, Stephen. And, and I, but I do want to add one very, I think a very important detail to what you just sure. said, because I'm in complete Go harmony it. with it. <laughs> but dissonance in its own way is a profound gift. Oh, okay. Because without some, every uh -huh. now and then, until those harmonies, you know, lots of times you're having someone you love and you're having a conflict with them. And you're, it's like you're rubbing against them all the time. But the rubbing, causes you to seek, it causes you to search, it wants you to dig deeper. When you have dissonance in your life, it's not something to retreat away from. It's not something where fear needs to take over. Hmm. It is opportunity. Hmm. So dissonance, if, if we don't have dissonance, we, everything feels like vanilla. Mm -hmm. Everything sounds bland. Dissonance is growth for human beings. That's and so a little bit of dissonance used in the right way is, is the spice of life. Right. We need dissonance to grow. We just need to be able to orchestrate it so that right. we live 
primarily in harmony. And, and resolve it as well, because as I understand, resolve. it's like when the dissonance, you build some tension through the music, but then you want to have the breakthrough and resolve it somehow through the music. And so that's, it's a great, again, a great metaphor for how we approach this, not to resist the dissonance, but to engage it and it energizes, but we want to transform it into a new opportunity. And we, we, are, we are on the same score, <laughs> and I think Birth 2012 is about that score, uh -huh. about, it, about looking at the world with a different possibility, without uh, thinking about the world as just tension, conflict, but if we think of the world as a symphony of opportunity, understanding that dissonance is going to happen, you know, Murphy's Law is there, right? right? It's going to happen, but dissonance instead, like you say, is our opportunity to resolve, right. to resolve conflict. That's really great. Yeah. Well, I'd love for you to share a little bit about what you're actually going to do for us at Agape, both the um, vision stage and uh, also what you're going to perform. Well, thank you. Yeah, Stephen, I'm, I'm excited. We're going to, uh, there's a piece of music I wrote many, many years ago. It's called Water. And it is in the key of D flat major. And in many, many uh, deep systems of study of music, the key of the earth is often referred to in the key of D flat major, hmm. interestingly enough, which, by the way, is about, I don't have a piano here, but it's about da. That's about a D flat, okay? If you oh, that the song "Chariots of Fire," da 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 da. Uh huh. Okay. And the, the guys are running on the beach. So that's where it person that's, draws that's, its epic quality from. That epic quality, mm -hmm. right? That piece of music is in D flat, for example. It's mm -hmm. a very grounding kind of piece. Very uh, different keys of music have different emotions in them. D flat happens to be a very grounding key. D major, which is only a half step higher, which is da, 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 da. Here comes the sun, do, 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 do. Here comes, that's bright. That's, that, that has optimism in it. It's a brighter key. D flat is da, it's a little lower, uh -huh. a little darker, mm -hmm. and a little bit more grounding. Mm -hmm. And all keys, all the, 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 the 11 different keys, evoke these feelings of, you know, uh, of groundedness, brightness, they have different emotional activators in them. Hmm. And that's what makes uh, music so interesting. So water is in the key of D flat major because I felt that if you got water, you better ground it. Because if you don't ground water, there's no way you can form the river. Mm -hmm. And by forming the river, you direct the water in a way that means something. Otherwise, it's a tidal wave you have no control over and it's chaotic. But if you can channel water and take the power of water Mm -hmm. and make a beautiful river out of it, well, now you've got that boundary. And inside of those boundaries, you have freedom. Hmm. Well, it's interesting that you bring, I didn't know this ahead of our interview here about the, the water theme, but um, when, we were, when I was tuning in about the actual ritual moment of, of our birth moment, our golden, globe and, our golden moment, if you will, where we were thinking about how to focalize the energy with an image of the earth, but then have water that carries the blessing as well. And there's been a lot of inner guidance I've had around water as really being central to this next era. Mm. In some ways, of the, of the elements, it's the most feminine because it flows, it blends. It's, it's like the, the blessing of the goddess, if you will. And right now, we, you know, have some people on the planet don't have access to clean water and that that's one of the foundational uh, anxieties that's part of the human condition. And to like have everyone have the blessing of clean, beautiful water is, is like one of the foundational things to really shift into a new era. Sometimes we talk about it, a consciousness shift and opening to love, but like it's really come in the most grounded level is the blessing of water. And so there have been tuning in about how do we really integrate the, the activation and blessing of water as part of this? And it's interesting you tuned in that that's, that's what you want to offer musically. Uh, well, I, I, I guess we're thinking uh, yeah. aligned without even having the conversation. Yeah. But I do believe that Birth 2012 is really about that kind of conversation. It's not even in words, it's felt. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tuning in intuitively. It's on our higher selves. And it sounds like we've been resonating that way without even having a conversation about it. And uh, water, you know, it, the majority of our bodies is water. The majority right. of the planet is water, right? right? They say that the, the two most expendable commodities, the two, the two most expendable commodities right now are water and time. So think about that, water and time, right? Water, the flow, the score, Time, rhythm. Nice. Are you going to live your life frantically? iPad, Texas, you know, uh, you checking uh, Facebook and living in the whole space in the black hole of social media. I mean, that's a good thing, but 
it swallows up a lot of time. We have a whole generation of, of people that are living here. They're not living here. Mm. I mean, I want to be with my brother Stephen Dynan right now. I want to be present with Stephen. I don't want to be lost in, oh, I better check my, my iPad. I don't want to be in that space. I want to learn how to be as present as possible. And I believe that that, that idea of putting our digitalia away <laughs> for a moment and learning how to be as present as possible is what's going to help us. Uh -huh. Well, Freddie, it's just, it's totally a delight to talk with you. I feel like you open new horizons each time I talk to you because I've, I've not been somebody who's been trained in music or really understood the theory. I can appreciate it, but it's like your perspective on it kind of opens it up into this whole new world. And, and I think that's a great gift that you're bringing into Birth 2012. And I know you're going to share a lot more about that from the vision stage. We'll have some of that on the global webcast, and then we'll have a full hour that people can go deeper into that um, dialogue. And then also your performance on the, on the main stage gala. It's going to be a great blessing to have it and thank you for sharing your perspective here today my pleasure thank you for inviting me well next we're going to go into updates from the field Well, we are so close now to the beginning of our Three Days of Love. It begins tomorrow, December 20th. And for some people who are watching right now, you are almost on the cusp of December 20th. So it's time to start practicing love yourself now. I believe actually as we're airing this live, it, probably in Australia, if I, yeah, Australia and Japan and a few other places, you are on the 20th right now. So we encourage you to now start practicing in a really sincere way, the opening of your heart, the extension of love and blessings to those around you. So we're co-creating this global field. And part of that is going to be tonight, we begin our journey with Barbara Marks Hubbard, who's been our beloved, uh, beloved uh, visionary voice of this, our midwife, a planetary midwife, we sometimes call her. She chose to go to Australia, where there's a beautiful event happening in Byron Bay. Uh, that's really, it's called the Uplift 2012. I encourage you to go to Uplift 2012 Festival. Uh, at upliftfestival.com. They have an app that you can download, watch on your cell phone. You can also um, get any access to any of the videos from there as well as communicate your vision with the app. It's a really fantastic addition to the, uh, the landscape of what's being offered in this time. And t they are going to kick off the Birth 2012 broadcast tonight where we, where we go into continuous coverage on this channel with uh, Theater of Our Birth. And I wanted to bring in uh, Barbara just for a few moments uh, now, from who has just given us a video from Byron Bay, Australia, to share this with you. So you get a feeling, and you, again, we want you to tune in 7.30 p.m. tonight, Pacific time. We're going to be broadcasting this live globally, and we want as many people to participate as possible to understand the power and the beauty of this moment from the long sweep of history all the way to present, present time so that we're seeing We've had this epic journey from the beginning of the universe to this moment, and now it's time to blossom into a new phase. So, Barbara, let's hear from you. Hello, everybody. This is Barbara, and I'm calling in from Byron Bay, Australia, where I'm going to be doing the theater of our birth. And I will be inviting everybody here to form hubs. And everywhere we go, people who celebrate Birth 2012 and beyond are gathering together in small groups. Please make of your small groups a hub. Register yourself on birth2012.com because after the birth, we will be able to nurture, connect, and cultivate our hubs as seeds for the new planetary culture. Thank you, and I'm sending you all my love. Can't help but watch her and smile. She just exudes the love that we're talking about, and that is the, the love of the mother for all of her children, the love of the grandmother for all of the world. And so let us all take inspiration from her presence and love and also really listen to her. I, I see Barbara as such a key prophetic voice for our time. She is offering the codes, if you will, for unlocking the new era and to open to this new window. So that's why we've de devoted so much of our time and life force to partnering with her in this Birth 2012 vision. So you're in for a treat. Again, that starts at 7.30 tonight. I also wanted to talk about two films that were, are going live on the platform today that you'll be able to click on by going to birth2012.com forward slash TV if you're not there already. And there will be icons down below, one for Mayan Renaissance and one for Shift of the Ages. Both of these are centered on the Mayan people. Because a lot of the 
prophecies around this time have focused on the Mayan people, we wanted to bring to you two gems of movies that are just out that really speak into the deeper wisdom of the Mayan people and the power of this time. Now, we, we've spent some time with elders like Don Alejandro, who is featured prominently in Shift of the Ages, as well as Grandmother Flor de Mayo, in, um, who's in New Mexico but was trained as a Mayan priestess. And they really have a pretty open-ended perspective about what this moment means. They're certainly not apocalyptic by any means. They see it as an opportunity that can be challenging, but ultimately is liberating for humanity to shift into a new pattern, to really open to, to peace and prosperity and a new kind of relationship between Western peoples and indigenous peoples. And one of the things that we learn from them is also that the Mayan people see that they've been entrusted with a kind of sacred timekeeping function. They honor their calendar in the way that we honor the story of the birth of Jesus in the West. They, they see the calendar as sort of a sacred uh, chronicle of, of the universe, and each day has its own qualities. So as they've been holding this, this calendar, they really see it as uh, a timekeeping for a larger shift on the planet. Not that it's all going to happen on December 21st or 22nd, but that, that this is the pivot point window. And we're already in it. And it's just that the, 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 tide, the, the era is turning and we're opening to new possibilities from a more masculine era to one that's more feminine, from one that is based more on conflict and domination to one that's based more on harmony, as we learned with uh, Freddie today. So they really see it as an opportunity. So these two movies that we're releasing today, they're available now for free, which is really a great generous gift from, from the uh, filmmakers. And uh, I know that Shift of the Ages was six or seven years in production, it focuses a lot on Don Alejandro and the deeper messages and potential for this time. Mayan Renaissance was created in, uh, in close relationship with, um, um, I'm spacing on her name, from uh, Rigoberto Minchu. My apologies on that, who's a Nobel laureate from, um, from Guatemala. And so they work closely with her in some of the youth congresses, and they're focusing more on the cultural renaissance of the Mayan people. So less on the prophecies and more on the cultural renaissance as the Mayan people kind of reclaim their heritage and bring out their, their gifts to the world again. So it's all very exciting. I also just wanted to say a little bit more about Unify. Uh, Unify Jerusalem has really been uh, coalescing as a, po as a potent early catalyst in, this, in these three days. Uh, on, at 3.11 Pacific time, which is 1.11, 1 a time of oneness in Jerusalem, on Friday the 21st, there's going to be joining into prayer, meditation, uh, blessing around the city, all the faiths in their different, in their different temples, as well as together on, on Mount of Olives and other places, to really take this as a moment where we all come together in a space of harmony and resonance. So there are people with Unify in particular who have been helping to activate sites around the world from Chichen Itza to uh, Glastonbury to, um, to the Giza pyramids. There's going to be a lot of different sacred spot ac activations, if you will. So the way that we can help join that is if we happen to be awake, it's 311 is a little early for, for California, but if we get up to join in that meditation and set the collective intention. And then they're going to be continuing that to noon, which is the, the place where we've really passed the baton in many ways be between the Unify movement and the Birth 2012 movement. It just so happened that we've be been building almost perfectly complementary movements, and we've now joined into one unified webcast. So you'll see the webcast now includes uh, with Unify at the top, and there's a link to their Unify hub. So we really want to make this a, a one unified effort, because if we're going to demonstrate oneness on a planetary scale, we've got to do it with the groups that are trying to catalyze it. So uh, it's been a really beautiful joining of the DNA of the two groups. And one of the things that's going to be great about that is that they've been also been in touch with programs from a whole range of locations, from Bolivia to, uh, as I said, Glastonbury to uh, a lot of folks in Mexico. And so we're going to be able to bring to you 48 hours of programming rather than 33. So it'll be very continuous coverage of everything that's activating around the planet and these higher possibilities that are unfolding for us now. So um, you're in for a treat. And one other thing I wanted to mention about the global webcast, a big project, DAR Berlin, is activated separately for December 20th. We're going to broadcast 6 a.m. Pacific time until 4 p.m. tomorrow. It's going to be an activation of artists and grassroots groups worldwide to really vision into this new story for humanity. How do we solve 
these pro the problems we have and open to a new era of possibilities. So this is all coming live. We're going to have the program schedule more detailed for you, but start tuning in tonight, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, with Theater of Our Birth from Barbara Marks Hubbard. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.